Before the financial crisis in 2008, minimum capital associated with trading risk exposure under Basel II was set based on a value at risk measure. Under Basel 2.5, stressed VAR and other metrics were introduced in an attempt to bridge the gap in capital setting until Basel's fundamental review of the trading book was completed. In the internal models approach under the revised standards, expected shortfall replaces value at risk and stressed value at risk. The introduction of expected shortfall is a fundamental shift away from a VAR-based approach to a measure of trading book loss that reflects the risk of markets experiencing severe stress and becoming illiquid as a result of such stress. Unlike VAR's calibration to the most current one year of market history, which may not correspond to a period of stress, expected shortfall is calibrated to a one-year period of historical stress. The introduction of stressed VAR in Basel 2.5 narrowed the gap in capital held by calibrating to historical stress, but did not factor in the loss of market liquidity during such a period. Prior to FRTB, the market risk capital charge was based on the assumption that all traded positions can be unwound, hedged, or liquidated in 10 days at most during stress, regardless of the type of position. The financial crisis exposed the weakness of this assumption. Expected shortfall changes the assumption that all traded positions can be unwound in 10 days to periods of up to 120 days, depending on the type of risk exposure. In order to calculate expected shortfall, banks must first choose a set of risk factors that affect the fair value and sensitivity of trading book positions. The positions are then mapped to these risk factors in the bank's risk and capital measurement systems. A simulation process can be used to perform the calculation. Banks can use a historical simulation, Monte Carlo simulation, and other methods as long as the model used captures all of the material risks run by the bank, as confirmed through profit and loss attribution and backtesting. The simulated loss at a 97.5% confidence level is referred to as the base expected shortfall and is a function of changes in all risk factors. In order to capture the effects of reduced liquidity during market stress, the simulation is repeated for all traded positions. For each subset, the corresponding simulation's expected shortfall is scaled marginally higher by the associated liquidity horizon. The total expected shortfall is then equal to the square root of the squares of the base expected shortfall and the sum of expected shortfall for the subsets of the risk factors whose liquidity horizon is longer than 10 days. In the indirect approach, Expected shortfall is calculated with a reduced set of risk factors calibrated to the most severe one-year period of stress available. It is then multiplied by the ratio of expected shortfall calculated with a full set of risk factors over the most current one year to expected shortfall calculated with a reduced set over the same period. The minimum value that the adjustment ratio can have is 1. At a bank-wide level, the trading book capital charge is determined based on two expected shortfall measures. The first calculation of expected shortfall is performed without constraints on correlation between different risk classes. This is referred to as the unconstrained, internally modeled capital charge, or simply the diversified IMCC. The bank must also calculate a series of partial expected shortfall charges for the five risk classes individually. The sum of these partial expected shortfall values is referred to as the undiversified IMCC. The total IMCC is equal to the average of diversified expected shortfall and undiversified partial expected shortfall capital charges. Banks that are approved for using the internal models approach must calculate a capital charge for each trading desk. Even if a bank is approved for using the internal models approach, it must also calculate a standardized capital charge. The standardized calculation serves as a fallback for desks that fail the eligibility criteria for inclusion in the bank's internal model. Significantly, the Basel standards published in 2016 exclude all securitized products from using an internal models-based approach.
The capital charge for securitized products must be calculated using the standardized approach. This means that traded instruments such as mortgage-backed securities, asset-backed securities, and other types of securitized products will attract a higher capital charge relative to other types of traded instruments. For banks and other financial institutions that specialize in securitized products, a higher capital charge under Basel's revised standards may affect their overall business strategy based on cost and performance considerations. Please visit our website to learn more about how Optimal MRM's Risk eLearning program helps banks to measure, manage, and communicate risk so they can navigate the market environment with confidence and stay focused on maximizing return versus risk.